one more bit of sound, and it comes from two Jets players, the two guys that provided the biggest glimmers of hope for the future last year. Garrett Wilson, who was the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Brees Hall, who was spectacular in his rookie season before he tore his ACL. Let's hear from them about the Jets' current offensive woes. When you play at this level and, and you play on the offensive side of the ball, if you weren't angry, I would think something was wrong, truly. Um, you know, the, the standard I hold myself to and, you know, the, the, the teams I've, you know, had the opportunity to be a part of, um, you know, this – you know, it's, it, this is disappointing, and it's been, you know, it, it, it definitely messes um, with your psyche a little bit. We all got to grow up and just continue to do our job each and every play. We can't have one or two people killing the play. Um, so I got to take pride in it. What do you mean by grow up? Just grow up and just do our job, do our 111th every play. You know, this kind of reminds me of the Aaron Rodgers advice given from afar a month or so ago. Don't point fingers. Don't complain. Just do your job. And he's around now, and he's in a position where he can deliver that message. But at some point, if you're going to be around, it starts to dilute if you're not playing, if you're not part of it, if you're not out there dealing right. with it. Like, there are of Aaron Rodgers that will cause them to hang on every word. He says, that's going to wear off. You're going to get used to it in time. Like, when you're starstruck by someone, if you're around them all the time, eventually it fades. Eventually something happens that causes you to say, that guy's not much different than the rest of us. I'm no longer mm -hmm. in awe of that person. So at some point he's got to be back on the field. The, the pregame warm and I'm, and I'm not trying to contradict what I said earlier. All I'm saying is the messaging from Aaron Rodgers isn't going to work unless he's playing. I'm not saying he should. This is a tough one. And I think... You know, somebody was asking me yesterday about, is Josh Dobbs the future in Minnesota? Well, these things have a way of answering themselves. Mm -hmm. Let's just see. And by the time we get to the end of the season, just like the MVP race, we spend so much time talking about it, which is fine. It's good for business. It's why we're here. But by the time <laughs> you get to the end of the season, you just kind of know. You kind of know. Yeah. Like, we'll know whether or not Josh Dobbs is the future. We'll know who the MVP is or should be. And we'll know when Aaron Rodgers is healthy, whether or not it's worth the time, the effort, and the risk for him at the age of 40 to go out there and play. And really, and this isn't me trying to justify my paycheck to NBC by selling Sunday night's game. There's only so much that can sell Sunday night's game, Jets, Raiders. But, but this I'm game. I'm looking forward to that game. This game, well, you get paid this week and I don't. This game, and the more I think about it, right, because the Raiders have the new vibe. The Raiders have the ding-dong, the witch is dead thing going on. So that makes them fun. And I've said all along the NFL is better when the Raiders are good, when the Raiders oh, are yeah. relevant, because you love them, you hate them. They're the AFC's version of the Cowboys. But for the Jets, as a practical matter, this is it. I think if they can't beat the Raiders on Sunday night, this is why you watch this one, folks. Everybody out there who gives a caca about football, watch this one on Sunday night. See, I'm going to get paid now. Watch this one on Sunday night because if the Jets lose this one, if you're Aaron Rodgers, why bother? Because Buffalo's next, and I know the Jenga Tower may collapse, but Buffalo's next and then the Dolphins on Black Friday, and it may be Black Friday for the, for the New York Jets. That may be their fourth loss in a row by dinner time when you're eating your first round of turkey leftovers the day after Thanksgiving. They may be done, and this game Sunday night, to me, is the keystone on whether or not they'll be done before we even get to December and Aaron Rodgers even has a chance to flirt with the idea of playing. They may be oh, done. Man. If they lose to the Raiders on Sunday night, they very well may be done. Oh, you're making me think of Steely Dan, man. Let's throw another verse into that song. When Black Friday comes, the New York Jets may be done. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting when you put it like that. You know, I, I'm I'm thinking about what they could do to this uh, offense that is now led by Aiden O'Connell with the Las Vegas Raiders. And like, that could be a very difficult proposition for him to go out there and look good, given what this this team has done to other quarterbacks. But 
at the same time, just the vibes that are coming out of Las Vegas. They also, they smell like cigars and it really, really seems <laughs> joyful, right? Everything that I have been hearing and seeing from the Raiders and talking to some people I know that, that still cover that team. I mean, it is one of the most unique situations that I've ever heard of with an in-season firing, right? It is, like you said, ding dong, the witch is dead. So I think that there are a lot of compelling and, things that come down to Sunday Night Football. And they're four and five. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they're not out of it by any means. It's, it's, a, it's a tough field in the AFC. And that AFC North, baby. like after the Broncos beat the Chiefs, after the Broncos beat the Chiefs, it's like, hey, are the Broncos, do the Broncos have a chance? And you look at the standings, it's like, man, you got to jump over a lot of teams to get into that seven spot. But somebody's going to land there. And if the Raiders can parlay what they did on Sunday against the Giants, now it was aided by the fact that Tommy DeVito played most of the game right quarterback game. for the Giants. But if if they if they can, if they can beat the Jets on Sunday night, they become five and five. Jets fall to four and five. The Raiders are a far more viable contender at that point than the Jets. So it is a big game. I retract everything I said earlier about the game. I mean, it yeah, may Mike. set back offensive football. I, I you know, although there've been many examples this year that set f offensive football back to the seventies, but yeah, th this, this is an impactful game. A lot's riding on it for the Jets and the Raiders have an opportunity to become a great in season story, more cigars in the locker room, Max Crosby, with his tattoo shirt, uh, with the cigars running around, and Mark Davis makes a cameo. I've watched that video 50 times. I think it's great. It's just <laughs> great to see grown men joyful, yes. having fun, acting yes. like kids. That was the moment that drew me to this damn sport 51 years ago, December 23, 1972, when the house was full of neighbors who couldn't watch Raiders Steelers playoff game on their own TVs. We somehow had the game. And when Franco Harris caught the ball and ran in and scored to see a room packed with grownups acting like kids, that's when I thought there may be something to this football. This may be something worth paying attention to. So that's why maybe that's why I watched that video over and over again. I love to see that joy. And we see it in every locker room to some extent, but there was something extra about what the Raiders were experiencing because it wasn't just winning a game. It was ding dong, the witch is dead. And don't you ever talk about the Patriots that way, like Josh McDaniels reportedly said to Antonio Pierce when he invoked the 2007 Giants, beating the Patriots in Super Bowl 42. That was the, the story of the weekend from Jay Glazer. It, because it almost sounds made up. The whole I know. thing, that, and I had so many people last week, hey, you get a look into this story that Josh McDaniels dressed up as Mark Davis for Halloween and had P.F. Chang's brought in because that's his favorite <laughs> restaurant, and then they sat down and ate, and Mark Davis gave him the fortune cookie, and he opened it up, and it said, you're fired. Like, you got to look in, and I was like, do you really think that happened? Do you, like, isn't there, do you, do you have no inherent bullcrap detector that would tell you as you're reading these details? As compelling as it sounds, there's no way it's true. This Glazer thing is true that Antonio Pierce mentioned to the team before Josh McDaniels was fired. We got to believe we can beat anyone. The 2007 Giants believed it. And we beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And all McDaniels cares about after that is, don't you ever talk about the Patriots like that. And that gets back to Mark Davis. And you know what? I said a lot of things last week about Mark Davis. But you I kind did. of agree we, with his whoa. reaction. I kind of I kind of agree I with his reaction day. <laughs> to hearing that. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.